Uh, let's call to order the meeting uh, to order. This is uh, the Niles Main District Library uh, virtual board meeting. It's a special board meeting to discuss um, uh, abating the property taxes um, for this year. Uh, Diane, would you call the roll, please? Diane is not here, but I will call the roll. Carolyn? Yes. Here. Diane? Here. Karen? Here. Linda? Here. Patty? Here. Sue? Here. Tim? Here. All right, great. So I'm going to try to pledge of allegiance here. Uh, I have a flag that I'm going to share with my screen. We'll see how host disabled attendee screen sharing. Oh, don't do that. I need the screen to be shareable. Just hold it. I changed it. Just hold we it. Should, uh, stand, I right? Again. I changed no, but, it. But, it, but for the rest of the meeting, I have stuff that I wanted to. Ah, there we go. Great. Great, great, great. Great. Bear with me. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Here we go. See. Nice. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to stand. If we want to, you don't have to. So uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, 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 States of America, America. America. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice. <laughs> I stood up and my big old gut was in it. In the picture there is terrible. All right, so now I have, I wanted to go through the uh, um, spreadsheet that Greg sent and I did, and most of you probably didn't have a, an opportunity to get it. So hey, I Tim, Tim, did you want to do public comments? Oh. I know I, Mr. Carabata would like to speak. I, am I don't so know if anyone else. I apologize, my fault, my fault for not following the thing. Okay, so now we're gonna have public comments. Uh, remind everybody on, the meeting, public comments are, I'm gonna unshare my screen. Public comments are, how do I get that back? Oh no, oh no. Shrink it? Well, it is shrunk, I want it big. Where's the X? <laughs> Shoot. Dang, damn it. Hey Tim, up at the top, there should be a green bar, bar and you can say unstop sharing. Thank you. Red bar. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Right. There you go. Again, sorry for, for um, okay. So public comments, um, we're limited to three minutes per person. I do, uh, am I speaking too loud, Amy? Probably. No, um, no, you're fine. Right. I um, uh, want to, uh, usual spiel is that um, it is a public comment period, not a debate or a question and answer period. Um, if uh, trustees want to make a short answer, they may upon their discretion and or our executive staff. Uh, we're not going to broker any uh, profanity or um, um, abuse of any staff members or trustees. So um, let's, with that, we can start public comment. And is anybody given uh, an indication that I heard from Mr. Carabata that he would like to speak. Great. And Dave, I unmuted him. You are up, Dave. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad to see everyone's doing fine uh, in the middle of where we're at right now with the pandemic. You know, an abatement is such an important thing in that an abatement's like an eraser on a pencil. It helps you correct when a, when a taxing body, as you folks well know, is a taxing body wants to be able to fund a future budget. They write themselves a check and they send that check into the Cook to Cook County here. And that's what, we, that's what we call a levy. Now, the abatement is something that allows for catching that check before it's cashed and allowing that amount to be reduced so that the board does not receive the total amount of that levy. Two major reasons for that uh, is number one is because it turns out when they review their budget that they really don't need the money that's, that's, that was levied. Um, and the second reason is when a, a taxing body is over levying, it's a way to correct that over levy. It takes a lot of stress, it takes more stress and pressure off the, uh, the uh, homeowner 
who's paying the taxes to fund that, the, that, that checking account. So in, our, in the particular situation, the meetings that I've watched and those that I've spoken up at as well, um, I did want to see a, a 2019 uh, abatement. I did want to see a reduction in the levy of $1.047 mil, million. Dollars. Um, the budget, as I talked, to, as I commented before, uh, really does call for an abatement of taxes here. I think it's, I think it'll correct an over levy as well as also provide relief to the taxpayers, especially in this pandemic period. So I uh, laud the board for bringing up this matter for consideration and hope the board will uh, abate taxes and will abate substantially, if not all of the last levy, because uh, to the, when you levy for taxes as a, as a taxing body, you should be only levying for those monies that you actually and truly need based on historic spending and not estimates. And I thank you. Thank you much, very much, David. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Susan, did you get any uh, email request? I did not. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on one second. Um, well, I believe Mr. Yessel would like to speak. All right. Stephen, welcome. Hold on, let me unmute him. No, he's not here. He was here. No, oh, we lost Steve. All I right. Could go, I could go across the street and knock on his door. <laughs> uh, well, shall I read what he wrote something very briefly here? Sure, that'd be great. I would like to thank President Spadoni for putting together this meeting regarding property tax abatement discussion and possible motion to approve. Your swift acknowledgement of the concerns I brought up last meeting shows true leadership and teamwork, and I look forward to viewing the proceedings of the meeting, and I hope for a positive outcome. Thank you again for your time, as always. And it's addressed to Niles Main Library Board and staff. Great. Thank you much, very much, Stephen. Those are the kind of comments I like. Um, all right, uh, that's it for public comments, it sounds like? Yes. Good. As far as I know. Good, okay. So we'll, we'll consider that period closed. Um, now I'm going to share my screen again. Um, and, and I do apologize for anybody who's calling in uh, that you obviously can't see it, but we are, we are doing the best we can. All right. Uh, desktop. So I'm back here. Come on. Back here. Back there. All right. Can you see what I'm looking at? Are y'all seeing it? Yes. Yes. Now no. we are. I'm not hearing anybody. Okay. Yeah, it's very small. Uh, well, I'm, no, no, no. I'm going to make it. My daughter used to say biglarize. I'm going to biglarize it. <laughs> All right, so this was the, and I just wanted to go through it. This was what uh, um, Greg had given us. Uh, basically, it's, uh, we are indicating that we have 7.8 million. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not going to say the specific amounts. I think we're all aware that we're, we're talking uh, larger general um, rounding numbers. So we have six, uh, 7.8 million in our general fund, uh, 3.8 in our special reserve, and 285,000 in our special re uh, revenue. The special reserve and revenues there are uh, allocated and they can't be used for general operating expenses. So really at this point, we are talking about our 7.8 million as our operating expense. Uh, we do have a total of 12 million, but as I said, um, some of that is already taken up in special reserve and special revenue. What Greg was trying to show here uh, is that we do have uh, CDs and treasury uh, bills, uh, bonds that will be coming due in months coming forward. So, uh, so a goodly amount of this money is tied up in um, CDs that, you know, if we if we needed the money, we would have to uh, close those CDs out early, incurring uh, a fine uh, for that. But, you know, I don't think anybody to do that. Um, but in that they come due in the coming months, 
it's uh, we've got a nice rolling uh, situation where where money is available to us. So the, then in the lower portion of this is really more, I think, what we're looking at uh, for our discussion. Uh, if I can move that. <clears throat> so this past month we had a uh, uh, beginning balance of seven, uh, three point seven million. We received one hundred seventy one thousand. Uh, one of our CDs or, or our CDs came due at five hundred ninety two thousand. But uh, for our again for our estimates of of our discussion, we are going to estimate that we're having uh, an average of five hundred thousand per month for expenditures. And one of the other tabs, Greg showed us our, very, our expenditures from the past months, and it, it's roughly coming out to five hundred thousand. We do have a, a bit of a decrease. Uh, in expenditures because of the situation with uh, people not in building and, and not using resources to building. We haven't been uh, paying anybody over time. So uh, things have been down. A so this chart is nice because it shows us, um, now these are rough figures uh, so that uh, um, Greg was very diligent in putting down zero, I mean cents to the cents level, but really uh, we're, we're I, I'd say we, you know, we should leave it at the four million, uh, rounding to the five hundred thousand or, or, or number there. So uh, for me, as he's showing us, we have four million a beginning, uh, we're half a million dollar uh, maturities of CDs. Spend a half a million, we'll have four million remaining. June is a very similar. July is very similar in, in that we're still going to get more maturities. Um, September. I'm sorry, August is somewhat similar. We're rounding about to 4 million after we're done. But now in September, we start to just spend money without getting any CD maturities. And we are decreasing our operating balance as we move forward. To uh, a point in December, when we're down to about $2 million of operating expended uh, uh, funds. So, um, we're, we're, we're hearing rumors, according to Greg and, and, and uh, Susan, that Cook County will be delaying its August payment to us. It becomes in August, but uh, uh, rumors are having it that it might not be until January of next year. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this chart does reflect that, that beginning January 1st, we'll have about $2 million. We had expected to receive $3.5 million from the... Um, Cook County, but uh, it, we have an abatement that we're talking about. The abatement will essentially be uh, a decrease of that amount of money that we're going to receive from Cook County. <clears throat> in this chart, we just threw a figure of a million and a half dollars in. That's what our discussion is going to be about uh, if we if we have one and how much we should have. If we do the one and a half in. We still have our expenditures of 500, uh, I'm sorry, we're getting another uh, CD due coming in a half million, still have expenditures. And the chart goes on with um, monies that we receive and expenditures of, of, of funds. So this, this is showing us what our operating ex fund would be should we do an abatement. Um, now I did on my own, just because that's the kind of guy I am, I tried to do, that's not it, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> just so that I could understand it a little bit better too. What I did is I made a chart for, well, it's a spreadsheet, but uh, essentially what uh, a property taxpayer would expect to save on their next um, um, property tax bill. Because what this abatement will do it's not like we're, we're physically taking money out of our, our fund and giving check. What we'll be doing is decreasing their next property tax by a percentage based on our abatement. Now, um, Niles Library, uh, Main District, um, Main Township Library, I'm sorry, <laughs> Niles Main District Library, uh, we average about 5% on everybody's um, real estate bill. But that's an average. Main Township is, is around a 5%. Niles Township is a little higher at 5.7%. <clears throat> and the unincorporated areas that do pay taxes 
to the uh, library. They're at 4.3%. So you add those three together and you come up with 5%. You know, it's going to everybody's tax bill is a little bit different based on clearly their evaluation of their home, uh, the exemptions that they have, and so forth. But if you kind of do the math around the 5%, um, if this, this, as this chart shows, per $1,000 of a property tax, if we abated a million dollars, it would decrease by seven <clears throat> million. It would decrease by 14. And that would, um, um, that would continue on depending on what your level of property tax is. If you're at 5,000, then your, your um, savings would be, uh, for, for a million abatement would be $35, million and a half, $50, and two million would be seven dollars. So, it, it, because the library had you know relatively small amount of somebody's overall tax bill at five percent, there there is a limited amount that the library can do, and a limited effect that an abatement will have in any individual taxpayer's li uh, tax bill. However, that being said, I think it is um, <clears throat> our responsibility to see that, to do whatever we can to help during this crisis. Clearly we're in a big crisis, people are hurting. So um, that's, why we're, that's why we're having this meeting, obviously, that I believe you're all aware. Uh, so I'm going to ask if anybody has any questions on the charts that I uh, just showed. Let's see if I can get this big again. Um, I see Diane. Nope. Sorry. I don't know how to get this thing all the way big. Oh my God. Oh my God. Somebody help me. Are you trying to make it bigger? Tom? There we go. I got it. Thank you. I'm so sorry. All right. So um, I can stop sharing my screen unless you all want to see that chart again. Um, whatever. Okay, does anybody have any questions on that, those charts that I just showed? <clears throat> Karen does, yes. Somebody unmute Karen. Good. Okay. Um, I just had a question about these uh, rumors of a five month delay. Um, that would have some impact on us, of course, you know, when we would get the funds that we are gonna get. Uh, where are you hear hearing these rumors for, from and uh, you know, how credible do we think they are? Um, I, it's speculation more than rumor, I would say. It's the, you know, the library directors meet every week and People are starting to get anxious about that. People in Kane County and Lake County have more concrete assurance that they're going to get things. People in Cook County are a lot more anxious. <clears throat> and the other, the specific rumor that they were saying today is that the uh, payment might be divided into three increments instead of two, uh, so that people aren't having to come up with as much at once. But then the other side of that is it wouldn't matter as much for people um, who have been paying into escrow. Right. Right, right. That would be a lot more expensive for the county, too, just to administratively have to co collect and distribute another round of taxes, too. So I don't know that they'd want to do that. Okay. okay. So, but it's, you know, it is it, at this point somewhat of a rumor. But all, all it really means for us, I think, is that the payment will be delayed. So, um, uh, you know, one way or the other, we'll get the amount of money, but it might be sooner rather than later, later rather than sooner. Uh, Linda. Okay, so with the abatement, just so that I'm clear on the procedure and the process, um, so it's a one-time um, deal, like you just take it off the one time and then the next time taxes are... Um, going to be taken out like that 30 what was the amount three what was it 35,000 or 350,000 
that we were supposed to get? 3.5 million. 3.5 million. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. I forgot to put the decimal over a little yeah. bit. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the next time with the 3.5 million, um, then we still stick with the levy that we had originally? Well, the next levy, okay, so this affects our last levy, our levy in November. Right. It has nothing okay. to do necessarily with the next time we create, we, we assess a levy. What that will have to do with is during our budget discussion, and the next coming months when we do have a budget discussion. Okay, so this is, so you're right, this is a, this is a one time hit um, for the previous lobby. Okay. Uh, Linda's still talking. Oh, one, okay. Yeah, I'm just a little confused. So, because, okay, so remember when we um, went down the one year, I'm not sure if everyone was on, we went down that one year, and then we had, um, we needed to, push the back up in order to be able to get some of that money back or we would lose it forever. Is that still the, kind of the same thing then? So um, I've been in contact with the county and I, and I tried asking those questions. <clears throat> um, and the answer that I got is uh, a little bit unclear. Um, so what happened in uh, Oh, I, I don't know, four or five years ago, was that the board had reduced the levy two years in a row. In a year following a year of reduction, the uh, board can go back three years and, to the highest amount that was um, that was previously levied, plus the uh, CPI for the year, and that's their upper limit. Um, my understanding with an abatement is that we're not changing the levy, we're giving some back, but I don't know how that, how that affects the limits and so forth, except for the fact that if they count it as a reduction of the levy, we can next year go back to the, you know, go back three years and pick the highest levy plus CPI. Okay. You know, that'll happen like in November of, of 2020. Okay, that that um, clarifies it, and it, it makes sense. I'm just wondering, you know, how it affected us in the long run. Okay, thank you. Um, you know what? I, you know what I wouldn't mind doing. Um, I don't know. Wait, does, does it does it does it make sense to go around and just say whether or not we want to have an abatement or not? And then once, because if there are four people who don't want to have it, then it, it's a moot point, right? There's no point in even having a further discussion. Because we, we have two things we have to decide. Do we want an abatement and how much? So the how much might get into further discussions. So should we just go around and say whether or not we want one? That's just a question. Linda, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, I just have one thing. I would just kind of like to, I mean, I, I saw Greg's graph um, and everything. I guess I would just like to hear them say a little something before I actually go to one side or the other. You know, just on um, their thoughts and if they have any concerns or if they feel like we can do this. I don't know if they're want, willing to say their opinion, um, but I, I would just like to know from the professional's point of view, our CPA, sure. what his, uh, his viewpoint Yeah, we can ask Greg, but it is, it is solely up to our discretion. Oh, no, I understand. Not, I understand that, that we do have the operating funds available to do this per the uh, spreadsheet that Greg had sent us. Um, as a board, in previous years, we've been really good at saving for a rainy day, and now it's pouring. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we, you know, uh, we do have those funds. So um, given that... No, I understand uh, we have the funds, yeah. just that are we going to be able to have the funds what we've been wanting to um, save for um, in the future too, not only our, uh, sure. you know, our, um, you know, uh, what, what would you call like our capital outlay type stuff, like the things that we need to do, but also if we end up doing another um, 
uh, like renovation or something. You know what I mean? I'm just. I, I do understand what you're saying. Put ourselves close oh, for, for right. the future. But uh, I do understand what's happening today. But I also want to be mindful for another, for $70 a household or $100 a household, where's the risk and reward? That's my concern. So I just want to kind of, um, you know, wrap my head around it. Yes, I understand. And we do have um, money in our uh, reserve funds for our capital right. Right. that we talked about. So we do have that. So right. given that, uh, Greg, is there any uh, words of wisdom you want to impart upon us in this uh, topic? Well, I, um, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head, Tim, that, you know, this is one of the things that we build reserves for. Uh, if there's a potential uh, interruption or a real interruption in our uh, cash flow, uh, or if um, the community is, you know, going through a hard time, there's something that we can do uh, to help the community uh, uh, out of it. Um, it does put us a little bit a little bit behind in terms of saving for future capital uh, projects, but those aren't, you know, those aren't things that are gonna happen right now to the, you know, to the tune of, um, you know, several million dollars. This is, that's something that's gonna happen over an extended period of time. Um, what I, you know, what I modeled uh, for you was the available cash uh, more than anything, uh, because the available cash is the cash that we can spend. We can't spend the stuff that's you know, tied up in a bond or a CD, unless we want to sell it. Uh, the secondary market on those things tends to be a little bit disorganized, uh, a little bit thin. So it's kind of hard to do it uh, unless it's really attractive. So, you know, I, I, uh, you know, took care to uh, make sure that everybody knew that none of these projections included anything at all for capital expenditures, okay? And we've been talking about a roof and the uh, board has to make a decision on the roof. Uh, so it would be uh, good to retain the flexibility and not drain the tank all the way to zero. Um, you know, I feel that the model that we did uh, at an abatement of about a million five is, you know, is comfortable if, if that helps you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, Karen, you had something? Actually, I think Diane was first. I think she Diane. had her hand up first. Diane, thank you, Karen. Diane. All right, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, Greg kind of answered a few things I was questioning because I just don't want to come back a year or two from now and say, oh, we have to do such and such, and boy, I wish we had that money. And, uh, but I think he just kind of answered that. Um, I don't want to have to come back in a year or two either and raise the levy again or raise our taxes in any way just because we did something like this. Yeah. And I, I also I also wonder um how exactly is this done? I mean, is it a mailing that is sent to all the households or yeah. a check or is it just come off our taxes? Just comes off the bill. Yeah, and it's it's a reduction in your second tax bill for this year. And then, so how does the public find out that we did such a thing? Well, that's what the press releases are for. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it'll be through the newspaper. We'll put okay. out a press release. Um, okay. You know, they, they find out the way we do anything. So it's, it's okay. press release. Um, and then they'll get their bill. I don't, I don't think there's a, a notification on the bill itself that says it's been abated <clears throat> though I, I don't know I, I don't think that. so yeah I don't think so either so it, it'll we'll put press releases out mm -hmm. um, so yeah go ahead so, Karen. 
Yes. Um, so I, I don't, in my memory, we've never done an abatement before. I, I don't know if the library has ever done that before. So it's, it's really a new thing for us. And uh, Greg, you partially answered a question I had when you were answering Linda's question. And that is, I have some concern about how does this affect us going forward in terms of the tax caps, in terms of, you know, how, how does this play out? Uh, what I'm hearing, and, and, and I, I want to know if you're pretty confident about this, it doesn't really affect us in terms of how much we can levy next year. Um, and it's just really in an effect levying as usual, and then just turning around and giving a little bit of the money back to our taxpayers. Is that yes. pretty much how the county clerk is looking at it? Yeah, that's, that's um, you know, that's part of my discussion with the county. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have feelings that the way they're viewing it is exactly how I'm, I'm viewing it. But if the worst case scenario is they're, re you know, they're looking at it, for example, as an amended levy, which basically says instead of uh, $6,983,000, which is the levy from November, we're, you know, we're doing some amount less than that. You still have the ability to go back up to that six million nine hundred and eighty-three thousand uh, dollars in the following year, plus CPI, kind of you know, kind of like we, uh, like, kind of like the board did. I think it was the, for the twenty fifteen money. Okay, so you think that whatever our levy is now, next year, if we choose, and I know they will, but if we could levy the CPI above that amount, yes. above this year's levy. I believe so. Okay, um, and, and just one other thing, I, I think, um, I don't know if you've had any thoughts about it, Greg, and I think as a board, we probably need to all think about this too, is I don't know that this problem is gonna be over coming our next tax year. And I think there's probably gonna be a fair amount of pressure on us not to increase the levy le next year. I imagine our taxpayers are still going to uh, be hurting them too. So, um, you know, doing an abatement may be a one-time thing, but I suppose I think we need to think about the long-term pressure and, and how is this going to affect the finance of the library even next year, the year after that, because I, I just don't know how well our economy would have well bounced back by then. So yeah, I, I, don't, think, I, I think it's a wait and see. Yes, and that'll be part of our discussion coming forward in the next month. Our, our next two months for our uh, our budget for the next year. Uh, Linda, you had another question. Yeah, um, just a comment. Um, I just want to say I really didn't um, appreciate the spin of the suggestion that we were um, over levying or that we didn't need the money. Um, I feel that is really a bad perspective. And I feel that if that's in the paper, that that's how we're deciding on our levy. And then we're giving the money back because that's the reason is really a negative uh, perception to the community. I just want to let everyone know that is not how we levy. That is not why we want to levy um, any additional money. That it's because we are... Um, being responsible board to the, for the future of our community and our library. It is not for overspending or because we don't need the money. And that's why we want to give it back to our community. I just yep. want to make it extremely clear. I did not like those two comments. Yeah, um, I, I agree with you on this. This is this not the abatement in my view of it is not a decrease of our, of our budget or our levy. It is only because the library historically has been uh, responsible with their finances, now finds themselves in a position of having uh, funds available in their general operating uh, account that can be uh, given back to the community um, in order to uh, with the current situation. Um, so uh, I, I, you know, generally I, we're not, in my opinion, in defense of the library, we are not over levying um, the, the taxpayers. So, uh, Carolyn, I think you had your hand up next. Um, I know we're concerned 
Am I mute? Can you hear me? Uh, now I can, yes. Okay, thank sorry. You. Um, I know we're concerned about um, the economy and, it's, and, and the state of it, but as much as there aren't, as much as our residents are losing their jobs or they're working for a lot less and real estate taxes are going to be in a different situation, what we also need to remember, that's the revenue side but in terms of our library and our expenses, there's gonna be a major decrease. I mean, the library has now been closed for three months. Unfortunately, we don't even know if the governor's, his, his most positive thought was some type of reopening at the end of August. And then today, now we're not even reaching our peak till mid June, which is going to postpone that even further. While the library is closed and even in the plans to reopen, we will not come back like the library that we used to be because of the, um, the spread of this COVID-19. So our expenses are decreasing and I, and I don't want you to feel that because our revenues may be decreasing that we're gonna be at a loss, but because actually, we're not spending anywhere near or needing to purchase all the things we used to need. I doubt very much we're having a, bad, a, a summer reading program at all this year. I mean, when the governor thought we were gonna come back somewhat and start opening businesses, he capped it at 50 people or less. Okay, so I mean, imagine what that would do to our library trying to function. So I think um, the decrease or the inability for people to pay their real estate taxes is, is easily um, equalized with the fact that we will not be producing things like we used to. We're gonna have to come up with a whole new method and it's not going to be anywhere near as robust as it used to be. So if that could give you some sort of comfort. Um, I actually have gone over the past few months spending and revenues. I have also gone all the way up to September based on what we used to do as a library using last year's figures. We do a lot of the same things. So some of our spending patterns are, are repetitious and easily noticed. And we won't be anywhere near that this year. So I think a levy abatement won't hurt us in terms of being without the money we need right now. Fair point. I agree with Carolyn on that as well. And, and Greg did uh, reflect that a bit uh, in that his, his average of our past spending was like 535000 But in our spreadsheet, just to um, give it a, an amount, he, he estimated 500000 very well be less as Carolyn is suggesting, um, but it, it does look like we have uh, sufficient funds. Well, I would not be suggesting this at all if I didn't think we had sufficient funds moving forward in order to um, um, keep our, maintain our library for our uh, residents' needs. So thank you, uh, Linda. Yeah, just a quick comment on that. Yes, I, I do understand the programming may look different in that type of spending, but we do have to remember that the most of our monies do go to salaries. Just want to make that as a reminder. And I can't see that that's going to be changing that much, maybe a little bit of um, a few less people on, on board, but everyone still has their hours that they're working. And I just can't see the salary piece changing that much. And that really is most of our budget. All right, so. Yeah, you're muted. Hold on for one second while you're unmuted. Uh, Susan, are you, do you, uh, Sue, are you unmuting yourself? There you go. Great. Uh, no, you're back mute. There you go. Okay. Um, I would just like to make a comment about saying that the library is closed because it's not. The library building is closed, but I cannot believe the amount of things that this library is providing for the community. Um, I'm I'm amazed right, at the productivity, the creativity um, uh, that the staff has been able to rally around in such a short period of time. 
So for those else besides the board who are listening, please know that we, the library is not closed. Correct. Just the building is. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, good point. Thanks for that, Sue. Yep. All right. Uh, I guess I would like to um, go around and, and just hear if any, if who, who thinks, who feels we should have an abatement. First of all, just make sure that the majority of us feel that way so that we're not spending all our time, you know, debating. Um, are you guys all in agreement with that? Yeah, I'm seeing that. Okay, great. Um, I'll start with me. Yes, I think we, yeah, at this time we can have an abatement. Um, so I'm in a yes for that. Uh, I'm just going to go around the, my screen here, Linda. Yeah, good. Sue? Yes. Yes, Caroline? Yes, you said yes. I can't hear your face say yes. Uh, you're, Carolyn's muted. All right. I think I, right. yes, yes, I would agree. Thank you. Right. Diane? Yes, I'd like to continue the discussion. Great. Karen, well, then the majority of it. Karen? Yes. You, uh, yes, and Patty? Yes. Yes. Great. Okay, nice. So now we can talk about the amount. Um, I, I'm not sure how we how we come to an agreement, but my personal recommendation is the one and a half million dollars. That seems to be an amount that's uh, doable for our, um, our our cash needs in the future, and it is an amount that will. Though again, based that yeah, we're only doing five percent of any anybody's tax, the libraries is is a really small part, but at least something back to the um, uh, to the to the. Uh, <clears throat> and it's a it's a meaningful number, I think. When people that number, they'll 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 think, okay, you know, library is trying to do something for us. Given that, as it as it may, there is a clear mathematical formula. So uh, a higher amount will give uh, correspondingly a little bit more back, and a lower amount will give a little back. So um, I guess just go around and see what anybody feels <clears throat> the amount that we should give back, um, just so we have a, a general feel about that. Uh, Karen, you had a point about this, though. Uh, I actually had a question. A and, question. Uh, this may go to Greg. Um, right now, we've been talking about dollar amounts, um, and I was wondering why we're not, or why we're talking about dollar amounts as opposed to percentages. And I'm just curious. Does the county clerk look for a dollar amount or for a percentage reduction uh, in our levy? Because uh, we always talk about our levy in terms of a, a percentage, but uh, now we're talking about flat dollar amounts, and I'm wondering why that is. So uh, they're looking for, they always look for specific dollar amounts that they can turn into a percentage uh, so they can apply it to everybody's equalized assessed valuation. Okay. Oh, I guess I guess what I'm thinking of in terms of raising our levy, we always talk about a percentage amount. Right, there's a percentage uh, limitation, um, you know, that's you know that that's that operates every year. Okay. Uh, in answer to your question or your comment, that uh, that proposed the one, the one I'm talking about, the one and a half million, would be a, uh, a twenty-one and a half percent decrease of the last year's levy. That's pretty much. So there's that. So clearly, you know, one million would be a less of a percentage and two million would be a greater percentage or whatever we give. But but at that point it's a bright it's a, just a tad more than twenty percent. It it made the math a little easier. Uh uh, any other questions or comments for this, the rest of us? Okay, um, at this point, I'm going to ask uh, uh, for an amount. Uh, Linda, do you want to speak first? Um, sure. I'm actually looking at the $1 million just to um, begin so we can actually see how it feels. And if we needed to do it again, if the COVID starts again, we could always up it at the next time. Um, I just don't want to push ourselves to go too high and then have it hurt us in the future. 
but I do believe in the abatement and I do um, want to help our community. Reasonable, reasonable comments. Uh, Sue? Unmute. I, yep. I, I, thought, I, I thought the, the mute was being controlled by someone else. Sorry. Right. Um, I think, you know, I would be willing to even go up to 1.5, you know, at the, with the figures that you laid out that looked reasonable too. Um, you know, I'm a Niles resident. I'd like to see a little relief, <laughs> you know, and um, basically so that I can share it with my local community. You know, I think that an abatement is part of the library's mission in the sense that we want to serve our community and help them when they need help. And many of them do right now. And, you know, whether we're out of work or not, you know, if we have a little something more, we can spread it and, and hopefully help the community as community citizens. Nice. Um, actually, I did want to make a, a, an odd little comment on that. It, 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 it dawned on me <clears throat> that we're in a weird position. Usually when a trustee votes on an issue that personally benefits them, they're supposed to abstain. But I thought that too. <laughs> right, you know, but we, we can't, right? We can't we can't, but so I don't know. Um, if we were getting a physical check, I suppose we could, uh -huh. you know, give it back to the library or whatever. You know, I think it's okay because we're not benefited any more than any other taxpayer. That is I mean, correct. If, it's not, if it's we not voted not ourselves, perfect. just ourselves, a uh, okay. reduction, that would be a problem. Okay. Thank you. Some, <laughs> thank you. Made me feel better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, do you have a, an amount that you'd like to toss out for us? I'm definitely. Um, fine with the 1.5, but based on all the figures I've seen and the decreases, I mean, we could comfortably go to 2 million, but um, uh, I know everyone is concerned that it's too high, but again, like I said, since I've gone through all the figures, 2 million would be doable um, if the board's going with 1.5, you know, I certainly would agree with that as well. Um, it's, it's all for the benefit of the residents. Okay, marvelous. Thank you. Uh, Diane? Uh, I think you're on mute, Diane. Okay, there you go. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, definitely I agree with an abatement. And I go along with either one or one and a half. Um, I don't have the figures. I don't have your sheet right in front of me, but I could agree to either one. If I mean, as long as we all agree on a figure, I uh, will go along with it. Okay. All right. So it seems to be leaning towards one figure. Uh, Karen? Um, I agree with Linda. I, I prefer the one million uh, abatement level. Um, I think, you know, reducing your income by 20% is a pretty big drop. I mean, imagine if your own income was at 20%, you know, it would, it would seem pretty startling. Um, and, and just because I'm concerned about next year and the year after that, what kind of pressures might there be on us to, uh, for you know, reduce our levy or keep it level then? And um, again, I, I don't want to give some relief to the taxpayer, but I, I'm not quite sure if I want to go beyond that right now. Um, so I feel a little bit more comfortable with the $1 million uh, abatement. Okay. Patty, it's all on your shoulders. Oh, is that what the pain is? <laughs> uh, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I could go with either. Um, I think if we should have more of a discussion. Um, what but you... I, I have no problem with one and a half. I have no problem with one. Either one, at least we're giving something back. Okay. Um, well, <clears throat> it's it the again the the abatement isn't going to necessarily affect our our for next year, nor is it going to sound it uh, we're we're making a um 
um, we are making a, 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 a pretty solid assumption that it's not going to affect our ability to do the um, levies in the future for funding for our, our library. Uh, it is uh, in the available amount of money that we have, but we do have um, our, our CDs coming due and we do have the money coming from the uh, county um, the, the next payment and the following year's payment. So it, it is still a revolving amount of revenue coming in. Um, I, I don't, it is a, at this point, it is a one time uh, hit on our available funds. We do have, again, I'm going to say we do have funds put away in our reserve uh, fund. We have money put away in our reserve funds to take care of all the capital expenditures that we had been talking about, which were not even. There are, there are possible capital expenditures that we haven't even, you know, made a definite decision on whether or not we need to do those. So, um, in in my opinion, uh, I feel comfortable with the amount of cash, with the amount of funds that we will have on hand to continue operating the the library to the level that this community uh, has become used to and uh, will need to do so in the future. Um, that being said, one, one thing I did want to say about Carolyn's, it, it is a valid point that we um, <clears throat> will be decreasing it to some extent due to this, but we, we don't have, we have an unknown as to how much we'll need to increase because of the, uh, the hit that people will be having. We don't know the needs for, for we'll probably decrease our large um, meetings, correct, but we may have an increased hit on small meetings that people want to gather and, and use the library as their place of business or business meetings or whatever meetings are there. Um, plus the resources that we will have online, it's possible we will, <clears throat> we may need to increase those. We don't, nobody knows the future, but um, we do know that the library has a place in our community that we want to continue funding. That being said, somebody had a, a, a hand up? I thought, uh, Susan, Susan, hello, Susan. Yes, I'm here. I'm not just the secretary. Um, well, I just wanted to uh, make sure that everybody understands that. And thank you, Sue, for bringing this up. The library has been very active during the time we've been closed. We do have a full scale summer reading program planned. It's just going to look different. It's going to be handled mostly online. But um, we still, you know, will be having prizes. I don't know how many people will participate. That's a complete unknown to me. But we are finding a lot of our programs are really very popular. And we are continuing to have things like Shakespeare Project. There's a, a program just this Friday coming up. And the nice thing about that is we don't have a cap on the number of seats the way that we would if it was in our large meeting room. So, yeah, we're continuing a lot of the stuff that we're doing. And as uh, Linda points out, the majority of our expenses is in staffing in any case. So the thing that I think that, you know, looking forward, I think we can predict that the library will not be open the hours that it was open before immediately. I think Caroline is right that when we come back, things are gonna look different, but I don't think that we are spending a great deal less than we are now uh, that, than we were before, to be honest. We're spending some less, but not a ton less. Um, much like the show I saw this morning about zoos, you know, they. Uh, they're still feeding the animals. They're still, you know, doing all kinds of things. And the library is still doing a great deal, even though the physical building is closed, but it is still being heated and uh, lights are on in places and, you know, there are still expenses. So I just wanted to clarify that piece of it while you were talking. But, you know, in general, I am perfectly happy to have you abate the taxes. I think that, you know, we have, we always like to have we were trying to plan for the future. I think there are, you know, this is a time when maybe we're gonna have to not do all the fun things that we thought we might be able to do. And we may have to postpone some of the necessary things we were planning to do, but that's the time that we're in right now. That's it for me. Thank you, Susan. Um, Karen, you had something else? Yeah, you know, I, was, I was just going to say, and some of the things we were going to do are not necessarily fun, like replacing a roof. I mean, they're they're sort of necessary, but um, we're just postponing it a while. We're just, you know, we're, or maybe I don't know. I mean, there, we might have to do that. Diane. Oh, okay. I just want to reiterate um, Karen's point about well, we don't really know next year. Maybe we will want to do the same kind of thing next year, and that would be possible, right? 
yep, absolutely. Uh, um, the, this abatement uh, is yeah. to be done every year, sure. So. Yeah, so I'm kind of leaning towards the lower amount at this time then. Not, okay, see, now you changed it. <clears throat> you had said 1.5 before, now you're at the 1 million. Well, I said either one, but I'm leaning to the lower one at this point because we don't know what the future will bring and a million dollars is an awful lot of money. And I think it would be appreciated by all. Okay, well, I was going to make a motion for the one and a half, but it, it sounds like we've got uh, more people who are leaning towards the lower amount. <clears throat> um, uh, if you if you don't want to wait, make that motion, do you, do you, would you like me to make a motion? I can make a motion now. Um, I'll, I'll make the motion. Uh, I, I'll make a motion to abate an amount of one million dollars uh, of the November 2019 tax levy. Uh, and I'll second that. Second. All right. Well, okay. Uh, let's just go around and it's a yes or no kind of a thing at this point. So, uh, <clears throat> Linda? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm next on the thing. I'll say yes. Uh, Sue? Yes. Thank you. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? We didn't hear you, Diane. She's muted. She's. Yes. Yes. Okay. Karen? Oh, uh, yes. All right. Patty? Yes. All right. So that motion carries. Uh, I, I do. I wish we would have been a little bit more. We could have, but. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy that we've come together as a board and, and made that uh, gesture to the residents. Um, there's actually nothing else left on the agenda since this is a special board meeting. Oh, Carolyn, yes. I just uh, have a question. Okay, sure. now that um, you've agreed um, with an amount, what is the procedure to um, have this filed with the uh, Cook County clerk? Like, what do you need to do? Uh, go ahead, Greg, or Susan. So we have a, a document that we provided you. Um, yes, yes, we I need saw to, it. We need to fill in the amount on that document of $1 million and, and then show the net amount that'll be uh, charged or uh, uh, collected for the general fund. Um, I've, I've, I've told the county that they will have uh, the documents that they need by uh, Wednesday, close of business. So between now and Wednesday, close of business, we need to have the finalized documents uh, signed by Tim and Diane. Okay, so, so that means they can be processed by this Wednesday in two days? Is what you meant? Is what you meant this Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Yes. Uh, what is it? Okay, the great. 13th? I know. I know. There's a rush to get this to them, or it may not go through. So I was just wondering how long it would take us to get it to them. All right. Oh. Well, that's wonderful. I'm okay. going to stop over and sign it tomorrow, uh, Diane. I don't know if you're comfortable <clears throat> going to the library or not, or Susan can bring it to you, or or Greg. But we, we can uh, take uh, attend that offline. How we actually get it signed? Okay. Yep. Um. And then can I ask a question about going forward? Um, our next, we just have a board meeting coming up. We have a board uh, meeting coming up uh, in, in uh, two weeks, I believe. Um, it's not next week, right? It's, no, it's next week. Next, next week. week. Good. The 20th. The 20th. All right, so next this week. This is the second week. We meet on the third week. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And at that point, um, we're looking to Greg and Susan to do a preliminary presentation for the uh, budget for the next year. Then uh, I'd like to have a special meeting on June 10th. Right, Susan? That's what we, we felt was the best. Yeah, June 10th to have our special board meeting for um, just a complete uh, a review of our budget. Can I ask what day of the week that is? Wednesday. 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 It is a Wednesday? Okay, right. thank you. Yep. 
So that meeting will be <clears throat> annually. Generally, we have a, a special board meeting that is solely dedicated to the, uh, oh, sorry about that, the, um, uh, the budget. And then our June meeting will be, uh, if, if at that point we're, we're satisfied with uh, the discussion on the board, on the budget, then the June meeting will be um, a final decision on the budget. So can I just ask a question? Well, wait, part. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, maybe, I, did I misquote? Yeah, so, so Tim, you need um, a minimum of 30 days after you pass the tentative uh, budget ordinance to finalize the budget. So the, so with the June 10th uh, meeting, if you go ahead and pass the tentative ordinance, that'll start the clock moving so that you can um, actually pass the budget in July. Right. Cool. You are right. Oh, because yeah, otherwise sorry. it'll be less than 30 days if we wait. <laughs> okay. Uh, it'll be just slightly less. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, so we would really need to pass the budget on the 10th. Is that what you're saying? You need Don't to we have the to tell August? Uh, it's, right. a two step, it's a two-step process. Right, tentative, right. The first step is the tentative ordinance, and mm -hmm. that basically says this is what we're thinking about, and then, um, and then, you, can final, and then you finalize it. Mm -hmm. Don't we have until August that we can do it? You know, the uh, final? Yes. We can. So if there is some problem with us coming to our tentative at that June 10th meeting, we can delay it to later and then. Oh, no, no. You need well, I'm just days. saying it's possible. I'm not saying we're going to do it. I'm just saying it's possible. There's, uh, we would there's still be legal. We prefer not to do it, though. Yeah. Exactly. We usually yeah, I think to get it done early. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, we lost you. Sorry. Uh, what are you, are you fixing dinner back there? It never rings and it rings now. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I sort of missed it. So so we will be discussing the budget at a budget meeting on the 10th. Correct. Absolutely. But next meeting, Susan and Greg will present the budget yep. or yep. a preliminary something. Okay. Yep. That's our, that's our, our plan. Okay. Right. That, that's fine. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else, I want to thank you all and uh, thank you for uh, doing this for the residents. And uh, I call for uh, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. So motion. Second. Any seconds? Go around. Linda. Or Susan, take the roll, please. Who seconded? Uh, Patty did. No, I said motion. Right. Who we made seconded? the motion. And Karen Carolyn seconded. seconded. Carolyn seconded. Carolyn seconded. Okay. Um, shoot. I could do it. Not my forte. All right, I'll just go in the order that you are. Linda? A. Two. Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Kim? Yes. Diane? Yes. Karen? Yes. Patty? Yes, thank you. Thank Very you. Very nice.